Hello and welcome. This looks like a complicated problem, one that involves a system, a pump. But actually, if you read the problem, it's about finding flow states. In a pump, flow enters at a certain state, and its job is to raise the pressure at the exit. And to do so, uh, you know, shaft power is delivered to the pump, which basically, essentially, you know, it, it, it turns some veins uh, and, and speeds up the liquid, and it goes through what is known as a volute raising the pressure. Anyway, that's a separate discussion. We'll do that in Chapter 4. But in this particular problem, we are supposed to find state 1 and state 2 from the given information. Uh, plenty of information are supplied for state 2 and state 1. Uh, and what we are supposed to find is the change in the rate of transport of flow energy. In other words, how much energy J dot is coming here and how much J dot is going out there. These are two uh, flow properties, properties of the flow. And their differences actually turns out to be exactly how much shaft power you need in a pump. Well, this, this flow states are discussed uh, in chapters, chapter 1, uh, but uh, in chapter one in your textbook, uh, but the model we are going to use, the SL model in this problem, we are asked to use the SL model, is discussed in chapter three. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and I think I have already logged in as a student and get the process started. By the way, this particular video is going to build up on on the system state SL model uh, you know, we have solved the problem. This, uh, this is the blueprint. Uh, so go over this problem first. I'm assuming you already have gone over this solution. And to solve the flow, to solve the flow state problem, we'll kind of follow the similar procedure. So we go to the test steps states, flow states, and the material, the, the, the thermodynamic model to consider is SL model, and that launches our app. Okay, so as before, uh, you can see that uh, state 1 is the default state, water is the default fluid, so we don't have to change any of that. Inlet state information given is 100 kPa, temperature is given to us, and instead of the area, oh, oh sorry, the velocity is also given to us, so let's set that to 10 meter per second. Instead of the area being directly given, the diameter is given. So we can write a formula pi d squared by 4 for, for the area, 0.1 being the diameter in meter, because we have to always use the SI unit. So this gives us uh, uh, the, the mass flow rate and all other information that we need. Notice that the flow picture uh, emerges here, the state has been computed. For state 2, uh, the final pressure is given, uh, 5000 kPa, there's the exit pressure, I'm sorry, and we of course know that the, the, the mass flow rate must be equal to m dot 1 from conservation of mass principle. Uh, what goes in is coming out. But the velocity and height are given to us. We also know these are parameters of the problem. We could just enter the velocity and height as 15 and 5 respectively, but it would be nicer if we set them as parameters. So we just isolate our user code and let's enter, declare some variables. Suppose we call it vel at the exit is given as 15 and z at the exit is given as Five. So we just do a calculate and, and, and register the changes here. Now we can go back to the state panel, state 2. Instead of writing 15, we can write well exit. Uh, this, it has been registered and z should be equal z exit. So what is the benefit of doing that? Now we can easily go and change parameters. The temperature is given, uh, 30.2. So now the entire state will be computed. We can go back to the IO panel and calculate what we are after. 
So suppose um, the first question is what is the change in j dot e would be what? It will be m dot 1 star j1. That's the flow energy that is flowing in. j dot out will be or the exit we could name them. Of course m dot 1 and 2 are equal but we could still write it like this. Uh, so we know what is what is the flow energy going in, transported in and out. So the difference uh, delta j dot, or if you want to define a variable like that, will be what? Uh, change is j dot out minus j dot in. We expect that to be positive uh, because uh, there is shaft work going into the system, and so you can see that it has been calculated to be 459. Uh, so this is our answer here. But to do the parameter or what if studies, suppose somebody says what is the effect of exit velocity? Uh, what if the kinetic energy were neglected? Remember the inlet kinetic energy was, the velocity was 10 meter per second. So now if I change it uh, to 10 meter per second, that is velocity at the exit is also 10 meters per second. We do a calculate. So recall, remember this number, uh, our current answer is 459. Uh, and now we want to recalculate the answer based on exit velocity being equal to the inlet velocity. So we do a calculate here first, to register my velocity change. All the answers will be still wrong. Uh, then we do a super calculate. That updates state one and state two. Let's isolate the code we wrote and calculate. So now what we get is uh, 454 is our answer. In other words, if the velocities are equal, uh, there has been a change from 459 to 454. Uh, Percent-wise, it's almost uh, it's, it's less than about 1%. So that's why kinetic energy change are often neglected. Similarly, go back to the original solution, put it, we can calculate and super calculate that updates the calculation, isolate. So that's the procedure to look at the test, uh, to look at the user code. Uh, now if I want to make uh, z at the exit, uh, z at the exit same as z at the inlet, which was zero. So we, we set z exit to zero, we do calculate, and we do a super calculate. Uh, we are done. Uh, and you can see that now the answer will be probably even less different, 455 as opposed to 459. Of course, when we change a variable here, it's a good practice to go back to the state and to make sure, uh, like we, we wrote the z exit, we changed to zero. So you can see when you put the pointer over, in this area, the value is shown. So you can see the, sco the, the possibilities. In the IO panel, if you declare the variables uh, that we want to change in a problem, then it becomes so easy uh, when we use the super calculate button in conjunction. What it does is simply um, goes over every state calculated and re redo, redoes all these calculations, updates all these calculations. Okay, so I'll stop here and we'll build on this solution for even harder problems.